So good day, a bachelor in public administration students. So now we are in the uh, fourth topic of the program administration discussion, which is now the program design. Uh, basically, the program design revolves around the parts, the com common parts of a government program. Though there are no standardized uh, parts, there are no uh, specific document that will say that these are the uh, correct or uh, uh, composition of a government program. However, I tried to to find the most common parts in almost all uh, government programs and I will discuss it to you one by one. So, uh, programs just like policies are directed by its vision, mission, and sometimes with addition of specific objectives and our goals. And the following are some of the most common parts of program design. The vision, mission, the goals and objectives, uh, kung mapapansin natin, these are the most common uh, um, uh, part and element of an organization. And in a policy, in a program and project, uh, the formulate uh, the formulators or the uh, the agencies also put a vision mission to guide the implementation of program to a certain direction so these are the most common parts number one is the title of the program of course very important number two are the authors the rationale and introduction the vision mission goals and objectives the legal basis target beneficiaries and then the uh, program details However, before we could come up with a certain program, a needs assessment must be conducted first to ensure that an issue or a problem is verified. Just like what we've previously discussed before coming up with a program or one of the uh, source of a program idea, which is an issue or an existence of a problem, we have to verify it first if it is worthy of uh, of uh, attention or is it worthy nagawan ba ng uh, programa so what is a needs assessment it is a systematic process of gradating information about the current condition of a targeted area that underlie the need for an intervention so basically when we say needs assessment then we go back to the source of issue or problem. Babalikan natin kung saan nagmula ang problem or ang issue na magiging source ng ating program idea or magiging baseline natin sa pagbuo ng programa. So, uh, identification of this particular problem or issue will uh, also identify the possible beneficiary. In a simple program, the most important uh, uh, thing about the needs assessment is that when you go back to the society where the problem or issue is identified, so makikita natin sino yung mga affected, sino sa community, sino sa public, sino yung vulnerable, sino yung magiging beneficiary. So makikita natin yung profile ng ating beneficiaries. Bakit kailangan nating malaman ang profile? Because the uh, design of the program will depend on who will benefit. So, kung ito ay pang bata, kung ito ay pang matanda, kung ito ay para sa PWDs, kung ito ay para sa mga vulnerable uh, individual. So, nakadepende siyempre ang ating uh, intervention. Additionally, it is important to examine the existing assets and resources in a community to help lessen or protect individuals from risk conditions and or to prevent the emergence of related problems or issues. Sa pagbuo ng isang programa, The, the amount of intervention na ating i-apply or uh, i-input sa program design ay nakadepende din sa resources na available sa community. So, uh, let's say for example, sa isang barangay na identified na kung saan maraming out-of-school youth, so we already identified the issue which is the, the number or the increasing number of out-of-school youth. Identified na rin natin ang uh, beneficiaries, which are the out-of-school youth. 
So, paano natin na uh, mababago or ma-adjust ng existing assets and resources in the community sa pamamagitan ng needs assessment? So, kung halimbawa, pagpunta natin doon sa may uh, kondisyon ng community ay ang mga out-of-school youth ay kadalasan mga mahihirap well, normally naman talaga mahihirap but uh, there are certain fractions and part and parcels of out-of-school youth ay hindi naman mahihirap, ayaw lang talaga mag-aral So, sa dami, sa pamamagitan ng identification ng quantity ng ating beneficiary then pwede tayong magdagdag o magbawas ng resources doon sa community na iyon And aside from that pwede rin nating malaman kung yung community, let's say for example kung ang barangay ay may existing project or program to solve that issue, then yung program natin na gagawin or i-apply doon sa ating beneficiary, posible nating mabago para mag-fit doon sa existing intervention na ina-apply ng authority. Okay? A needs and resources assessment allows you to first be able to identify where problems are the most prevalent. So, kung halimbawa ang target ng iyong program ay ang isang uh, barangay, so makikita natin sa ang part ng barangay, kailangan tayong maglagay ng mas maraming resources, mas maraming manpower. Next, to be able to identify what groups of people are the most involved in the problem. So, yun tinatawag natin kaninang potential target population. Third, to be able to identify what risk and protective factors are most associated with alcohol and other drug use. So, the third uh, needs and resources assessment is an example. Oh, is an example of needs assessment that involves uh, association to alcohol and other drug abuse. So, when we say risk and uh, protective uh, factors, kung halimbawa ang... Uh, ang issue or problem ay uh, manageable, okay, manage, manageable sa isang programa, then the uh, amount of manpower or resources that we're going to put into the program should also be manageable. So, let's say, for example, ang iisip nating uh, intervention para sa mga alcohol and uh, drug abuse is education, sa so, tingin nyo ba ito ay magiging enough para mabawasan ang kaso ng uh, drug addiction and alcohol addiction. So, we have to also to assess. Kaya gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, our intervention depends on the issue, depends on the problem, and also the target population. Kung sa tingin mo, your program is very simple that it will not solve the uh, the uh, issue or problem then baka hindi ikaw ang tamang tao na mag-formulate ng program na yon baka yung mas malaking organization gaya ng government national government or probably you might need the help of the, cover the uh, private sector fourth, to learn more about suspected needs and to uncover new needs of course Sec, uh, next, to assess community resources that exist to ameliorate the problem. So, halimbawa doon sa society na kung saan may issue or problem ay may mga experts. Meron ng existing experts na sa tingin mo pwede mong makuha to assist the, problem implement, the program implementation, then makakatulong yun. Manalaman mo yun sa pamamagitan ng needs and resources assessment. Next is to assess community resources that exist. Okay, again, uh, tapos na yan. To assess whether the community is ready to respond to the issue or problems or whether it is better to wait until a higher level of community readiness develops. So, kailangan din natin kausapin yung mga taong involved. So, are they ready or not? Paano natin masasabi or ma-assess na ready na ang ating community? Ibig sabihin, uh, you will conduct a preliminary survey. Pag sinabi natin preliminary survey, then basically you are getting data pa lang. You are getting uh, first-hand information. R dito sa uh, sa sixth uh, needs and resourcement uh, necessity is that aalamin natin kung sila ba ay magiging willing na mag-respond doon sa program. Alam ba nila? May time ba sila? Will they be very helpful? Will they be cooperative? Okay? And uh, 
that uh, kind of assessment will allow you as a uh, program implementer to adjust the design of the program to, uh, adju to adjust the uh, amount of uh, resources, manpower, financial, and technical. So, this is very important. Next is to obtain baseline data that can be monitored for changes over time. Okay, The baseline data serves as a guide kung may babaguhin ka sa programa mo. Okay? So, let's say for example, uh, from this, uh, from the very first uh, day of uh, a program implementation, masyadong maliit ang iyong pondo, then that fund will serve as a guideline or baseline data para mag-increase uh, ka ng fund mo the next time around. Okay? Next is to gather support from stakeholders. Of course, this is very important because uh, stakeholders are can support the program in many ways, especially in the financial and technical aspect. Pwede magdagdag ng pondo, pwede magbigay ng tao na makakatulong para sa program implementation. Gaya na ng non-government organization. So, kung halimbawa ang problem ay alcohol and other drug abuse at sa tingin mo nagkukulang ka ng manpower, then pwede kang mag-tap doon sa uh, mga barangay health workers, sa municipal uh, health office, sa non-government organization that involves such uh, problem or issues. So, 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 stakeholders are very important. But the most important uh, stakeholders are the beneficiary. Pag hindi sila cooperative, pag hindi sila willing mag-cooperate sa program, then it, your program will, not probably, will probably not be successful. Okay? How do you conduct a uh, needs and resources assessment? So, these are the uh, eight steps. Set up an assessment committee or group, work group of members from your group to collect the data. Be sure to include key stakeholders. So, you just have to assign, delegate tasks from your uh, members from the members of the organization that will implement the program. Next is examine what data are currently available to assess the risk and protective factors. So we uh, already discussed that. Determine what data still need to be collected by your group. So when we say data, particularly in this discussion, uh, one good example of data na kailangan i-collect is the profile of the respondents or the beneficiary. Okay? And then anything or any background about the problem. So yun ang mga pinakamahalagang data. Determine the best, the best methods to gather the data and develop a data collection plan. So how will you gather the data? Meron tayong evaluation strategies and uh, data collection methods such as survey, interview, focus group discussion, pwede rin observation. So, kung gusto mo ma-assess kung uh, gaano kadami ang alcohol addict or drug addict sa barangay, let's say for example, then the method to gather the data would be uh, would be a secondary data from the data of the uh, barangay or uh, municipality. Implement the data collection plan analyze and interpret the data, select the priority risk and protective factors to be addressed. So in a program, there might be possible uh, possible there might be possibility of main intervention. Possibly magkaroon ka ng maraming solusyon sa isang problema doon sa programa. So you have to identify what particular intervention ang mas madaling gawin at mas mad, at mas effective. Kasi pag nalaman mo Pag, na, pag nalaman mo o na-identify mo kung ano yung pinakamadali pero pinaka-effective na intervention or solution, hindi ka magsasayang ng resources kaya ng pera. Pero bakit kailangan pa rin natin consider ang uh, other, other uh, solutions para meron kang backup plan kung hindi mag-work ang iyong first priority? Okay, example. Good Barangay Youth Programs help to protect youth from becoming involved in alcohol and drug use. So in this example, needs may be identified in terms of youth, especially out of school youth needing something to do, like sport activities, tree planting, or community outreach to distract them from being involved in illegal activities. Often needs may be defined in terms of assets to be strengthened, 
in contrast to the focus on problems or deficits in the community or within a target population. Sa pamamagitan ng needs and resources assessment, gaya ng pag-solve ng, uh, or become involved in alcohol and drug abuse in a good barangay youth program, maraming pwedeng intervention such as, nabanggit kanina, sports activities, the replanting community outreach para madistract yung ating mga out-of-school youth. So, gaya ng sinabi ko, in this particular intervention, pwedeng simultaneous, pwedeng sabay-sabay kung kaya ng manpower. Pero kung hindi, then prioritize prioritize ang pinakamadali at pinaka, mas pinaka-effective. Paano mo yun malalaman? Malalaman mo yun sa pamamagitan pa rin ng needs and resources assessment. Okay, magtanong-tanong sa stakeholders, magkandak ng benchmarking activities, maghanap ng best practices. At uh, gaya ng sinasabi natin kanina dito sa uh, <coughs> baseline data and support from stakeholders, kung sakaling meron ng uh, existing na uh, intervention ang community na yon baka pwede natin yung ma-improve. At kung halimbawa, isa dito sa sports activities, tree planting o community outreach ang nagawa na nila, then we have to improve the program or the intervention sa pamamagitan ng needs assessment. Kaya napakahalaga ng needs and resources assessment at pag-reach out doon mismo sa may society. Kasi kapag wala kang hawak na information, wala kang background informa information, magiging bulag ka sa pag-implement ng programa. So, uh, this is very important, the needs and resources assessment before coming up with a particular program. So, ito ang maging uh, guideline mo sa draft or outline ng iyong program. Okay? Thank you for listening.